Amen. Billy Graham said this. He said that prayer is simply talking to God. Oswald Chambers said that prayer does not fit us for greater work, that prayer is the greater work. Martin Luther said to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Luther also said that the fewer the words, the better the prayer. Amen, right? You sat through some prayers, right? I, uh, you know, I, I could go on and on, right? Yeah, I, I, I could have a, a whole list of quotes about prayer from famous people, uh, famous individuals who have gone before us. But, but that's not why we're here this morning. I, I believe and in, in my hope as to why we're here this morning is so over to the course of the next few moments and the next few weeks that, that we could have a real conversation, practical conversations ab about prayer, about what prayer is, about what prayer is not, about what, what prayer, uh, about how to pray, about why we pray, when to pray, wh what prayer sounds like, what, what, it, what it looks like. And so we're, over the next several weeks, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about, about prayer and, and let me just first say that, um, that we're not going to cover everything. Uh, we're not going to be able to answer every question about prayer. Uh, but, but may I encourage you, as if you would like, if on your communicator card, as, as we're in this series, if you've got a question about prayer, something that, that you've always wondered, you've, my guess is, is, is if you've always wondered it, then I probably can't answer the question. Um, but man, if you've got some questions about prayer, could I encourage you to write them down? And maybe that might help me over the next several weeks. Um, I mean, it's, it, the series is kind of all laid out, but, uh, but man, if there is something that, that uh, is kind of reoccurring that folks are saying, this is, this is where I'm struggling, this is the question that I have, this is what I'm wondering, then, uh, then we'll see what we can do to try, to try to do our best to address and answer the questions you might have. But, but we're, we're just gonna talk about this topic of prayer. It's a huge topic. You can't cover it all in, uh, I mean, we could talk about it probably now until Jesus comes and not cover everything there is about prayer. But I believe this. I believe that James was correct when he said that the, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. The, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I believe that with all of my heart. So it's important it's important that we know about and that we believe in the power and effectiveness of prayer. And so here, here's, here, here's, my, here's my statement. This is what I'm going to lead with. It's, it's this, is, is that I believe that what we believe about prayer is in direct proportion to what we believe about God. That, that the things that we believe about prayer are, are connected and, and, it, and it, it's in direct proportion to what we believe about, about our Heavenly Father, about God. And if you didn't already know this, I'd like to state the obvious, that, that God is a really smart God, right? He's pretty intelligent. He knows what he's doing. Um, and in fact, there's this, there's this word that, that in, in religion that, that we use to describe what God knows, and it's this word called omniscience, and that God is omniscient, and his very nature, his very character is that he's omniscient, that he knows everything, that there's, there's nothing, it's not possible that there's something out there that God doesn't know, okay? God can't learn anything. We, we can't teach God anything. There's nothing that you know that God doesn't know. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There's so much that God knows, right? His ways are higher than, than our ways, right? His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But there's nothing we can teach him. There's nothing he can learn. There's nothing that surprises him. There's nothing outside of the realm of his understanding. So God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. 
Why do we know that? Or how do we know that? Why do we believe that? There are these passages in the Bible. Some, some of these verses are going to be up on the screen um, for, for your convenience because we're going to kind of blow through them. But in 1 John 3.20, it says this. It says, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. God's greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Psalm 139.4 says, before a word was ever on my tongue, you know it completely. It's kind of scary, isn't it? Before, before we ever thought to even speak the next few words that I'm going to speak or the next few words that you're going to speak, God knew them completely. You're not going to surprise him by anything that you say. I'm not going to say you're not going to disappoint him depending on what you say, or you're not going to please him by what you say, but you're not going to surprise him with what comes out of your mouth. Before you say it, before you speak it, God already knows it. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were ever a thought, before you ever existed, before you were ever knit together, formed together, crafted together in, in your mama's womb, God knew you and he knew you perfectly. He knew you completely. He knew, he knew who you would become. He knew where you would be. He knew we would be here this morning. He knew all of that. God knows everything. He's omniscient. He is all-knowing. Matthew 10 Verses 29 and 30 tells us that God knows even, even when a nasty old and disease-infected bird we, we call sparrows, even when a sparrow falls to the ground, God knows it. I, I mean, I remember as a kid, man, we used to have BB guns, right? And we would, you know, we try to shoot those nasty birds. I'm not a bird hater. Don't, don't, I'm but even when, it, even when a sparrow falls to the ground, God knows that. Sparrow, right? If God knows that, then how much more then does he know the things that are going on in our lives, in, in your life? Not only does he know when a sparrow falls to the ground, but he also, he could count the number of hairs upon our head, right? Right? It's just incredible to know that God knows us that completely. He knows us that perfectly. He knows everything there is to know about us. He, in, in, um, um, in uh, verse, verse um, sorry, Matthew 6, verse 8, it says that for your father knows exactly what you need even before you know it. So, so the things that you're going to need next week, the things that you need in six months, the things that you, you need that you don't even know you need, God knows what those are. And, and he's, he's working things out. He's, he's working in people's lives. He's, he's bringing things together. He's, he's, he's working through people because he knows what you need even before you know it yourself, even before you know that you need it. God already knows that. How crazy would that be to have perfect knowledge? How crazy would it be to know everything, to, to, to not, now some of us, some of us may think this already, that there's nothing that I need to learn. There's nothing that anyone else can teach me that, that I'm, I'm the smartest person in the room. And um, for, for whatever reason, there are people that think that. But how incredible it would be to, to have the knowledge that God has, to know everything that he knows. I mean, uh, quite honestly, I, I, don't, I don't want any part of it. I, I don't want to know what God knows. I can't imagine the incredible burden that, 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 God, that God has knowing everything he knows. I mean, he, he, knows, he, he knows when our last day is. He knows when our last breath is gonna be. He, I mean, he knows everything that's going on in, in this world in which we live. And, and I mean, I got a lot going on. You guys probably have a lot going on and we're, 
We're, we're Columbia City. We're, we're, we're Larwell. We're South Whitley. We're Pearson, right? I mean, he, it's the whole world. He knows everything about everyone. That's what makes him God, right? He's incredible. He's amazing. He is all knowing. And so if God knows everything, if, if he knows what we're going to say before we say it, if, if he knows what we need before we even know to, that, that we need it, and even before we know that we need it, so even before we can ask for it, if, if God knows all of that, then, then why pray? Then, then, then why, why pray? Why, why, as Billy Graham says, why have that conversation with God? If he already knows what we need, why have the conversation with him? I mean, if, if, if we're, if we're, if we're going to be open and transparent with, with one another, my guess is, is, that, is, is that all of us, at some extent, at some level, have, have doubts, have, have fears, have questions, have things that... that, that that we struggle with when it, when it comes to prayer. You know, we, we have questions like, well, do my prayers even matter? So if God knows all of that, if he knows everything, then, then does it really even matter if I pray about it? Does, it? does it matter if I bring it up to him? Does it matter if, if, if I share it with him in, in, in my quiet time? He already knows about it, right? We've probably all experienced this, like there's been something going on in our lives and, and maybe we've forgotten to pray about it. We've been too busy. We, we woke up late and we, in, in, in a rush, we had to, had to you know, get off to our first meeting or we had to get to work, but, but we've, we've forgotten to pray about something. And then we hear later, oh, that, that maybe, you know, that something worked out, that, 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 that a, the prayer was answered, you know, and you're like, oh, I, man, I forgot to pray about that. I forgot to lift that person up. I've been there. I struggle with that, right? I mean, there are just, there are, there's, a, there's an endless amount of prayer requests, right, that, that, that probably all of us are exposed to. So how do we keep them all straight? How, how, do we, how do we always remember them all? How do we pray for all of them without, without maybe a prayer like, God, you know all those prayer requests, right? We can do that. That's okay. That's, that's fine. But how, we, 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 they're just things that we struggle about when it comes to prayer. Like, do they matter? And, and, and was God going to answer it anyway, even if I prayed for it or if I didn't pray for it? Do, 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 do my prayers really move God's mighty hand? Do, do, do when, when, I, when I pray for something, when, I, when I'm persistent in my prayer, when I cry out, and, and, and when there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing else for me to lean on, there's no one else that I can turn to, and I, and, and I pray to God, God, does, does, does he really show up? Do my prayers really matter? Do they really make a difference? Or, or is... Is, is God already working? Is someone else's prayer gonna cover the prayer that I forgot to pray? I mean, there's all kinds of questions that we can ask when it comes to prayer. But if he knows it all, if he knows everything and even knows the things that we don't know, then why pray? I believe that, that God didn't create us to be puppets. I don't think he created us to be mindless robots. Uh, he, he gave us a mind. He gave us a soul. He gave us this, a spirit. He gave us an opportunity to make decisions, to make choices, right? He, he, he gave us those opportunities. And, and instead, of, instead of this idea of, well, oh, well, you know, or, or, or you know, whether I pray, whether I didn't pray, I, I, I believe that God wants us to know that he longs to hear our prayers. I, I believe God wants us to know that he longs to hear from us, that he, that he longs to, 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 to hear our voice, but, but he longs for us to turn our attention towards him. Even, even if we don't speak, even if our prayers aren't even audible, even if our, our, our prayers are, are right here in our mind or, or they, don't even, they don't even come out of us, I believe God even knows that. He wants us to turn our attention 
towards him. I believe that's what God desires. I, I believe God wants us to know that, that he is moved when, when we pray, that, that he does desire to hear us and, and he desires us to, to lift others up and situations up and whether, whether we're having tough times or whether we're celebrating or whatever's going on in our lives, I believe that God wants us to know, wants us to know that we know that we know that he longs to hear from us and that our prayers do matter and that they do move his mighty hand. I believe that he, he wants us to know that, that people are healed, that, 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 that people, that, people that, that, that eyesight's restored, that, that, that people that, that, are, that, are, that are lame, they can, they can walk again, that, that people who are sick become, become healthy again because of the power and the effectiveness of prayer. I believe that God wants us to know that. I believe that he... He wants us to know that, that families are changed when moms pray, that, that, that families are changed when dads cry out. I believe he wants us to know that. He, he wants us to know it. He wants us to believe it so much that it compels us to pray. He wants us to know that the communities can be transformed as a result of the prayers of his church. He wants us to know it. He wants us to believe it. He wants us to know that the kingdom moves forward, that the kingdom advances, that, that the kingdom wins as a result of the power and the effectiveness of prayer. So if he's all-knowing, and he knows what we're going to say before we say it. There's nothing we can teach him. There's nothing that God can learn. There's, there's nothing new for him. Why well, pray? Because I believe that God's word tells us to. I believe God's word directs us to, commands us to, and it, it implores us to. And then for the next several weeks, we're going to look at one verse out of the Bible. We're going to spend the next, the next five weeks looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. It's going to be on the screen if you want to grab the Bible and, and the, seat, the, the seat back in front of you, you can do that. We're, um, we're, I'm, I'm using the NIV version, the, the, uh, the versions in the back, uh, the, the Bibles in the back of your chair, they're NLT. It's just a little bit different, so whether you use that Bible or you look and follow along on the screen, it's, uh, it's completely up to you, but I've got the NIV Version, But Ephesians 6, verse 18. And this isn't the only location. It's not the only verse in the Bible that we could look at. But it's, just, it's the one we're going to focus on for the next several week, weeks. We're going we're gonna to break this verse up. Today we're going to look at the first two words. It says, and pray. But, but over the next several weeks, we're going to break this, this passage up. And, and we're, we're going we're gonna to dissect it and study it. But it says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. And so again, today, we're gonna look at the first two words because I believe that God directs us. He commands us. It's, it's, it's an expectation. It, it, it's, not a, it's not a, if you pray, I know there are other, other areas in the Bible when it says when you pray. I think this is similar to that. But it says, and pray. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So why pray? Why pray knowing what we know about God? Why pray knowing that he knows what we're going to say before we say it? I mean, isn't that kind of redundant? Why pray? I believe the first answer is this. And this isn't an exhaustive list. This is my short list, all right? My guess is there are several other great reasons to why we should pray. But the first one is this. is because anything Jesus does is worth duplicating. 
Anything that Jesus does, any way that Jesus acts, any way that Jesus lives, anything that Jesus says, anything there is about Jesus, it's, it's worth duplicating. And, and you can see time and time and time again in the scriptures where Jesus prayed. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think that Jesus knew that God was all-knowing? Do, do you think Jesus had a good enough relationship with his father to know what, what the word said about the father, knowing everything there is to know? Do you think Jesus knew that? I think he did. But I think Jesus knew more than that. He, he, he knew why it was important to prayer. And so when we look at Jesus' life, he prayed often. There were many times he would get away. He would break away from the crowds to pray. He, he, he would pray when, when he was healing someone. He would pray before performing miracles. He, he would pray, he prayed before choosing his disciples. He prayed before, before walking on water. Before feeding the 5,000, he prayed. Before teaching the disciples the Lord's prayer, he, he prayed. At his baptism, he prayed. Before raising Lazarus from the dead, he, he prayed. He pleaded in prayer that, that Satan would, would not sift his disciple, Peter. He, he prayed for himself. He prayed for his disciples. He, he prayed for all believers before heading to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus prayed while hanging on the cross. In fact, his last breath was a prayer. His last breath, his last breath was a prayer to God. And what do you think Jesus does today? What is it that Jesus is doing right now? I mean, do you think he's kind of kicked back, relaxed? Man, I've, I've done my work. Uh, it's kind of up to you now, Holy Spirit, and, and you know, you in the church. He, he, he sits at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for you and for me. It's what he's doing right now. He's praying for us. I mean, if we don't think that prayer is effective and powerful, my goodness, that's what Jesus is doing right now. It's what occupies his time. His prayers for you and for me. Jesus also knew that there was something more than, than just, just words. But that there was, there was this, this relational aspect of prayer. That, that when he would, he would break away and he would commune with his father and it would be just a time of, of, of him and his father and, and, and he, would, he would pray and he would listen and he would pray and he would listen. He, he knew that the, the, the relationship happened in that. It's, it's, it's one of the things that when, when I talk to people about prayer, I ask them a question. I'm like, well, how, how do you get to know someone? I mean, if, if, if you want to have a, a relationship with someone, if, you, if you'd like to know them, how do, you, how do you do that? Do you avoid them? Do, do, you, do you, like, when you see them come in this direction, do you turn and go the other way? No, you, you have a conversation, right? I mean, you, you sit down across the table from someone, you, you sit next to them, and you begin to talk. And, and you begin to, to listen. And, and so how do you get to know someone? That You get to know someone through, through that. So relationship happens in, in prayer. The, the other thing that happens in prayer is, is there's intimacy that happens. Because when you can break away, and, and it's not always just, just you and, and God, but maybe it's, it's you and a few others as a smaller group, or, or maybe it's, it's a larger group, but there's this intimacy that happens. There, there's, this, there's this opening up of yourself. There's this pouring out of, of your life and yourself and what's going on in, in, in your situation. 
And, and, and you open up and you share that, not only with God, there's obviously intimacy, intimacy that happens there, but there's intimacy that happens with, with one another if there are others with you. But, but there's this pouring out of your life through prayer. And so this incredible intimacy happens. And the, the third thing that happens too through prayer is fellowship. Fellowship, not, I mean, not only just getting together and sharing a meal and breaking some bread and, 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 and that, but, but there's this true koinonia, this, this fellowship that happens when, when you spend time like that, sincere time with someone else you get to know them on a different level. There are things that, that you learn about them and there are things that they learn about you. You, you become authentic with, with, with someone else. You become authentic with God, even though he knows everything, right? But you become authentic. Relationships, intimacy, fellowship, that happens in prayer. Why pray? Number two, is the early church dependent on it? The early church depended on it. And maybe, maybe it, was, it was just that they learned from Jesus. Maybe they, they learned it because he modeled it. But, but the early church understood and they knew that prayer was powerful and it was effective. They, they lived it, they experienced it, they saw it. Because it seemed like everything they did centered around prayer. Like every time they gathered together, they, they prayed with one another. Was, it, they, you read in the book of Acts, as, as the early church was, was, was kind of forming, we, we read that the, 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 the early believers, the early church, that they, were, that they were all together and they constantly prayed. It says that they were devoted to prayer. It tells us that they, they raised their voices together in prayer. And what happened? What happened to that early church? Nothing? Prayers didn't matter? No, it says that the Lord added to their numbers daily. Do you think prayer had anything to do with that? I think so. Prayer had, had an impact on their relationship with God. And, and as the Holy Spirit began to move it's when the church just became on fire and it spread and it was alive. Do you think prayer had anything to do with that? And we can, we can read the prayers of, of in the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, prayers of, you know, of, of people like Jeremiah and Nehemiah and Paul and Stephen and Peter. We can read those prayers and they're just incredible examples. I mean, we, could, we can re-pray those prayers if, if, if we so choose, but those are just great examples of, of the early church and the early believers as they engaged in prayer. They knew that there was something worthwhile. They knew that there was something powerful and effective about prayer. The, the last one is this. It's because God knows that everyone can pray. Now, it, it may seem silly, it may seem simple, but, but why pray? Because God knows that all of us can pray, can, we all can pray, that, that we're not, none of us are disqualified from, from praying. There, there's, there's, I mean, we can, I, I, I hear things like this, like, hmm, I, um, I just, I don't, I don't think I can do that. Um, I, I don't think I'm equipped to lead that group. Or I, I don't think I can teach. I, I, don't, I don't speak all that well. I, I can't do this. Uh, I, I, don't think that, I don't think I'm equipped for that. There's just a lot of doubt, a lot of question, a lot of fear when, when, it, when it comes to what we, what we choose to engage in when it comes to our faith, when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to the church but I don't know that it gets any more simple than prayer. I don't think any of us are disqualified when it comes to prayer. I mean, there, there's, there's not a reason. I, I can't think of a reason. I mean, you can, re, you can read the Bible where, where our sin, 
where our sin hinders our, our prayers from being heard by God. You can read that, but is there anything that hinders a person from praying besides ourselves, besides our own feelings of inadequacy, besides our own fear, our own doubt? Yeah, that happens. But is there a reason why we can't pray? There's not. And if you have one, it's bogus, okay? If, if you can think of a fear right now for not praying, I'm, I'm just here, I'm gonna tell you it's bogus. It's not true. It's not right. And God wants you to pray because we can all pray. I mean, what kind of deranged leader what kind of deranged God would create this thing called prayer if it wasn't effective, if it wasn't powerful, and, and if it didn't mean something? God says, oh, I want you to pray, but you're going to pray and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to hear what you say. I'm not going to do anything about it. What kind of God does that? That's not the God that I read about in, in the Bible. I believe that, that prayer is it's powerful and, and it's effective so why pray? If God knows all that he knows, if he knows everything, why pray? I believe for the individual, it's, it's the same as it was for Jesus. I believe that prayer connects us with God and, and that we can, we can grow in our relationship with him through prayer. Now, is that the only way that we can grow in a relationship with God? It's not. But do I believe it's one of the most effective and powerful ways that we can grow our relationship with God? Absolutely, yes. It, it's, the, it's the easiest way, I believe, too. We can do it right now. You can do it where you're sitting. You can do it at work. You can do it when you drive. You, I mean, you could probably read the word when you drive, but I wouldn't advise it. I mean, I'm not gonna say you're not gonna get pulled over if you're doing something crazy like that, but you can pray. Now, you don't have to close your eyes when you drive. Um, you don't have to do, you, you can pray with your eyes open. I mean, we're going to talk over the next several weeks about how to pray and when to pray and things like that. But it's, it's, I mean, it's universal. We can all pray. But if I ask the question, how's your prayer life? My guess is, is that several of us wouldn't want to answer that question out loud. Several of us wouldn't be comfortable, wouldn't, wouldn't answer with, man, my prayer life is so good. Man, I, I was talking to God just a few minutes ago and, and, and man, I, I, was able to, I was able just to share this with him and man, God, God I feel like God was, you know, calling me and directing me to this. And I'd love to have a conversation like that with someone. And I'm not saying it's not the case. I'm not saying that, 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 that there's none of you out there like that. But my guess is, my guess is the majority of us, the many of us, may not answer the question like that. May, may say, man, you know, it needs to be better. Um, I don't know that I'm all that consistent with my prayers. Uh, my guess is that that might be that might be more often than not what's said, and, and it, it's, it's how we connect with God. It's it's it, it's how we grow our relationship with Him. It's how we develop intimacy with him. It's how we get to know him better. It's how we, we, we pour our hearts out to him. It's how sort of he gets to know us better, but I know he knows everything about us. But, 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 but it's, it's, it, it's not just a ritual. But he wants us to pour ourselves out to him, right? You've got kids. Even when you know what your kids have done, even, even when they haven't confessed it and haven't told you, you still want them to share those things with you, Right? because there's still something that happens through this interaction. There's also, there's this fellowship that happens when we pray. 
God wants us to, to, to know that we know that we know that he longs to hear our prayers. My guess is, is that each and every one of us who are in here, that, that we're here as, as some connection, as some result of the prayers of someone else. My guess is, is that there was someone in your life, someone before you, maybe, maybe a, a mom, a dad, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, maybe it wasn't a family member. Maybe it was just, maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was someone who, who knew you through, uh, through a youth group or through uh, school or something of that nature. But my guess is that someone prayed for you. Someone prayed for your soul. Someone prayed for your life. Someone prayed that, that, that you would, would, would come to know Jesus. My guess is that that's, that's why we're here today. And that prayer was a direct result because I believe that prayer is powerful and it's effective. I truly, I believe that prayer dives into the depths of what could be to unleash the impossible. That, that where, you, where you think, wherever you think the impossible is, think of your life, think of your situation, think of what's going on right now. My guess is all of us, there's something that we're like, ah, I don't know that that'll ever happen. That's impossible. It's possible through prayer. It's, it, it's possible because prayer is powerful and it's effective. Let's pray. God, would you help us would you help us learn? Would you help us know? Would you help us to, to go beyond learning and knowing? But when it comes to prayer, would you help us to, to know why it's important? Well, let's, let's not move beyond that to the how and to when. I know we're probably spinning with all those questions about, well, how often should I pray and what should I? Let's not get there yet. We're, we're gonna get there. But God, would, would you help us to see the significance of prayer and to know why it is so important, to know that you desire to hear from us, that you want us to turn our face towards you. Even if we don't speak, you, you, wanna, you know the thoughts and the attitude of our heart. God, help us to know why. Help us to believe it. Help us to know the significance in it. Because truly lives stand in the balance. Truly if we believe that, that, that nothing incredible happens outside of prayer, God, give us spirits and attitudes. That we just long to invest our time with you and to commune with you and to have conversation with you and to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen.